Welcome to Drawfee, where we take dumb ideas. And make even dumber drawings. I'm Nathan. I'm Julia. I'm Jacob. And you guys did a fun thing without me. Yeah. I thought when we did it that you would want to get in on this action. Yeah. I love D&D. You, yes, you guys made some D&D characters, and I, I have forced you to do it again, but with me. Nathan came in the office slamming his fists I and was, said, again, I, but with me. I came back from vacation and was like, I can't believe you've done this. Was that one when I was on vacation or when I was yeah. sick? It, it was one of the times you were gone. It was one sure. of the times I was gone. Never again. Don't ever leave and you won't miss anything. Uh, once again, we uh, we have the website, who the fuck is my D&D character to thank because it's just a real fun uh, generator of D&D characters. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm gonna get us started with one because I'm so eager, I'm so excited. I love to role play. Eager beaver. Hit that button. I'm Here sorry it comes. I said eager beaver. Yeah. A gloomy tiefling fighter from an orphanage workhouse who suffers from nosebleeds. <laughs> an orphanage workhouse. Wow, no wonder he's gloomy. This is like a child. I guess it's not a he necessarily. Yeah. yeah. Also, they're just from an orphanage. They're from an orphanage, so they don't necessarily, an orphanage workhouse. An or yes. orphanage or workhouse. workhouse. Okay. Which sounds like a real rough spot. Yeah. yeah. It's like it's not enough to be an orphan. You also have to work. Yeah. It sounds like what Anastasia's from in the movie Anastasia. Mm -hmm. Or not from, but you know, where she lands up when she becomes where she Meg Ryan. Where she lands up. Yeah. The only thing I remember about Anastasia mm -hmm. is that as a kid, sometimes like it, it would get on or, or, or people would put it on. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And I would just look at it and I would know that it wasn't Disney. That's a, yeah. that's a Bluthus. I would know it. Like I would look at it and I'd be like, it's, it kind of is, but it's not. Yeah. And I didn't like it for that reason. I like yeah. it. It's got lots of fun songs. I think I've talked about this before, but I I just I found the Don Bluth. He was like the dark underbelly of um, video store rentals, and I thought it was it was cool. Oh, because it was like cool. And it like was like you edgy and you weird. never you never heard him. You never saw him advertised. The yeah. only way you found out about other Don Bluth movies was from the the ads that would play on the VHS copies of the Don Bluth movies. So like based on the the VHS box art I would be like oh rockadoodle what is this and then from that I was like oh a troll in central park what is this what is this they weren't great but I as a child just had my mind blown that like this content existed and like no one had told you for children yeah, yeah. they were cuz they were just darker you can listen to um uh, the uh, Wizard and the Bruiser episode about about Don Bluth. Donald Bluth. About Donald Bluth. For me, that was anime. Yeah. I found some anime I shouldn't have found when I was way too young for it. And it was not for kids. I, I definitely got a copy of Akira much sooner than I should have. <laughs> oh my God, Akira, yeah, geez. And I, I put that on and I was like, whoa, what's a cartoon doing this for? I am very scared, but also intrigued. And it did have that same feeling of like feeling you had stumbled on something you you weren't supposed to. You weren't to. supposed to. And that's there's something intoxicating about that as a as a youth. Yeah. So I'm sort of drawing like a like I don't imagine if it's from a an, an orphanage workhouse, I don't imagine they have like a ton of armor. So I'm imagining this is like a lightly armored. Maybe they've got like one sort of leather pauldron. It's so like a pit fighter sort of thing. Yeah. They got out because they were a good fighter. They're gloomy about it. Yeah. I don't think they, they've got, they're not like a knight in shining armor type fighter. Since you put that pauldron on, he kind of looked like uh, one of the companions that you can get in Fallout uh, 4. Oh yeah, he does, he looks like one of yeah. the super mutants. Yeah, like one of them super mutants. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's Now fun. with the horn, it's not. Now with the horn, it's not. But I liked that guy that you could get. Yeah, he, he was, was super fun. nice. Yeah, he was very nice. And Wait, do you mean the Fallout 3 one or the 4 one? The one in, Four. Okay, I was thinking of the three one. Oh. Because I always remember in Fallout 3, like at the end of it, spoilers, there's like a segment where you have to go in this like super irradiated room mm -hmm. to like put in like the water purification whatever to yeah. save the world, but you die. Right. Because it's so irradiated. But if you're there with your super mutant like partner, mm -hmm. there's no way to like tell him to do it, even though he's immune to radiation. Right. And so you're just standing there like, um... Please. Could you? Like, it, it, this wouldn't hurt you at all. Could you, you could please? You could just do this. Why do I? He's, he's still sort of a child. Like, I think he's a young tiefling. 
Like just Still, a young thief out on the street. He's strong because of all the work he had to do at the at the factory orphanage. Yeah, just a real. They should shut that place down. Let's make the feet a little bigger. Definitely violating some some laws. They must be. Get them big feet. Oh. Just just big enough to support this this massive frame. Yeah, and to do a good kick. And foe. I think this is like um, perhaps a, a great weapon fighter. So maybe maybe they just like found like a piece of machinery. Oh, I oh. like that. Oh, and they do suffer from nosebleeds. Yeah, so yeah. Let's that just is get important. let's just get that. I like that they just have like they would have like a big mace with like a gear on it or something. Yeah. Oh, gear mace. Gear mace. Thank you. Like that's just a... like a lead pipe soldered to a gear. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's that's what's going to be. It's even got sort of like the. Elbow. Yeah, it's got like some elbow. It's got like, little elbow grease. Yes, because it's got to have that counterweight. Yeah. Do mechanics have greasier elbows than other people? Uh, if you're a mechanic, yes. Respond. If you're a mechanic, respond. Where does the term elbow grease come from? Is it from mechanics' greasy elbows? Probably. Yeah, because like, they like store extra grease on the elbow so they can just like wipe it off there to to add. I'm thinking they probably kneel in a lot of grease. Yeah, is it is, is the idea that like they've the, if the grease gets all the way up to the, your elbow, it means you're really putting like oh you're really in there you're really in there, and that's why it like because elbow grease means like effort. Yeah. So it's the implication is the deeper you can shove your arm, the more grease into the car. Yeah. The better a mechanic you are. Exactly. That's what it means. That's what it means. I will n no longer be entertaining other answers. Okay. I have decided what it we means. We have decided what it means. Um, this looks like a big pizza cutter. <laughs> it does look like a big pizza He's cutter. He's gonna go cut a big pizza. We gotta, get some, we gotta get some teeth on this gear. The pizza is his foes. The pizza is his foes. He yells, the pizza is my foes. Yeah, and the nosebleed is the sauce. The nosebleed is the sauce. Oh. Everyone's like, I don't know what that means. I don't know what you're getting at here. And then it's too late. He's already pizza. He's cutting. already he's already got you. He's already got you. So no then, shoes. No shoes, I think. I, I think yeah, just like sort of I think just sort of like dirty. Just sort of like a dirty like I imagine they, they took the, the urchin background. Yeah. If this is five E. Tieflings do have them them devil tails. Yeah, they do. Maybe it's a gloomy, so it's the tail's probably down. Yeah. It's like uh like like how dogs' tails do. Like it might, maybe it's just like sort of dragging. Let me hit you guys with this and see what you think. Okay. Okay. Queeflings. Excuse me. I wish you hadn't. What do you guys think about that? Is that any good? Is that a good joke? I don't, I even don't know what it is. I don't. Uh, what like what are you going for? Don't explain it. <laughs> but <laughs> queeflings. I don't like the direction. I don't. Is it? Is yep. that a? Is that? Mm. Is that funny? I don't think. Mm -mm. I don't think that's for anyone. It's not for anyone. I, I thought for sure it'd be for someone. Maybe it's for, if it if it was for you, let us know, and then I guess it's got to be for some statistically some sort of professional help. Don't seek a trophy for having good joke listening abilities. You guys are no fun, <laughs> queefling. You, you won't let me have any fun. You can have fun. Can just, I? Just don't say queefling. Why not? Just don't do it. This is gonna be the hill I die on. <laughs> I'm gonna be posting a big, you know, Twitter post about why I left Drawfee. <laughs> it's gonna be 13 pages long, but it will basically boil down to they didn't let me say Queefling. Yeah, you got some like some scuffies up on his. Gonna get some scuffies. Gonna get some scuffies. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe like just some bandages on the tail. I like this design. This guy looks like he's got a story. Yeah, he's gloomy. He's pretty. Is this gloomy enough? Yeah. Do you think maybe just like? I think that's pretty gloomy. Yeah. Let's get just some. Of I'll that. make it gloomy in the render too. It's very good. He's got that it. like gloomy stoicism. Yeah, but don't but don't forget his nose do bleed. His nose do bleed. Maybe it's dripping a little. The nose it bleed. Cool. Uh, and their name is of course Tarb. His name's Tarb. What's the last name? Does he have one? No, he's an orphan. His name's just Tarb. His name's Tarb. This is Tarb. This is Tarb, the gloomy tiefling orphan fighter. Yeah. In the fighting pits from the orphan factory. From the orphan factory where the orphans go. It just sounds like the, the perfectly crafted worst life. Yeah. Is what he had. It's pretty bad. It's for, pretty bad. For when you like 
for those those uh, role play characters who um, have pretty good lives and they want to just see what it would be like to to not. Yeah, like this. Like this. This is Tarb. Let me go. You go. I want to do. Okay, time for me to roll a little bit of a Jacob character. Let's get one of those in here. Yeah. What do we got? A restless dwarf druid from the most vile of swamps who is wanted for a reward. Wow. All right. So, you <laughs> so like... it's a, gr a vile swamp druid. He It would be a smart move for this guy to just hide out, but he's restless, so he's probably just like getting into all sorts of trouble. This sounds like the character we decided that I would be if we made if we were D&D characters. Because we, we decided Dwarf Druid. Yes, True. we did decide Dwarf Druid. And I imagine I'm from a pretty, I mean, I don't think it's a vile swamp. I just think it's, I just call it home. That's you just know? your swamp. It's like when you live in New York long enough, you're just like, no, this is just how people are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is just life. This is gonna be his whole torso. Oh, very good. Good. I want him to be just like incredibly stock. That's a, that's a stocky boy. Yeah, and then I'm just gonna have kind of this area here. And what's nice is, you know, if you're a druid, you can turn into animals. Uh, so, like, ideally, you'd turn into animals that are at home in a swamp, like a like a crocodile. You can turn into animals as a druid. Yeah, dr yeah. some druids can. In D and D, oh. in D and D, their their big thing is they can turn into animals. That's fun. Uh, this guy doesn't though. He just likes to get in the swamp. He just all. gets in there. He loves how vile it is. He <laughs> He refuses. The yeah. only animal he turns into is a little pig. A little Sometimes piggy, and he rolls, rolls around, around in, the, in the mud, in the mud, and the muck, and he loves it. He loves it so much. That's why he's, he's wanted. So, Everyone thinks he's it's so gross. restless. Yeah, he's <laughs> like, ooh, I can't wait to get in that muck and do a little <laughs> shimmy shake around. He's just wanted. They just want to get rid of him. <laughs> yeah, this... <laughs> it's like he hasn't done any crimes per se. They're just like, get him out of here. Druids usually have like a gnarled sort of like stick. They get a stick. They can they can wield a scimitar if they so choose, but typically you just want to you just want to stack wisdom and then use your shillelagh cantrip to turn your stick into sort of a magical Oh, so weapon. you should have a little instrument? What? Did you say shillelagh? Is that Shill an instrument? No, it's like a stick. What? It sounds like it'd be a ukulele. No, a my guy is going to have a ukulele. A shillelagh is like a Irish word for like a bludgeon. He got confused. Okay, so he's got a ukulele. He's got a ukulele. He's got and a, a shillelagh. He calls it a shillelagh, his shillelagh. <laughs> he doesn't know any other druids. No one else lives in this swamp. <laughs> no one told him. No one told him, and he found this, and he's like, shillelagh. Shillelagh. He's like, no, that's not. Shillelagh. I, shillelagh. I, you smell so bad, I don't want to stand here and argue with you. <laughs> I'm just gonna shillelagh. say yes so I can leave. <laughs> I should not have come to this vile swamp. I should not have come to this most vile. I love the way it's written. Most vile of swamps. The most vile of swamps. Uh, so yeah, this is gonna be like a Of big all hand. the swamps out there, you know, you got like Shrek's swamp, which is pretty vile. I'm just thinking of all the poison swamps in the Dark Souls games. You got the poison swamps Blight in Town. the Dark Souls games. See, thanks, One of them is called Jacob. Blight Town. Yeah, you got Blight Town. And then you got this swamp, which is like way at the bottom. Way, way at the bottom. I think he's gonna have like sort of moss, like swampy moss, just sort of all on his like head and shoulders. Wasn't there a children's book where there was a substitute teacher named Viola Swamp? I don't I've know. I've never heard of it, but I'm gonna look it up. It was up. like about a real shitty class of kids who had a real nice teacher, and then one day the teacher is out and a real mean, mean teacher comes in, and then it's heavily implied Oh my at God, the you're end. right. It's called Miss Nelson is Missing. Yeah. It's heavily implied at the end that spoilers that Viola Swamp was Miss Nelson in no a disguise, way. getting out all of her pent up frustration at the kids. That's insane. And it worked because the kids are all very appreciative of how nice she is when she comes back because they didn't realize how good they had it. That's messed up. But then I think in future books, it's revealed that Viola Swamp is a real person. What? So I don't know. It's a series. It's a whole. Th it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. The end of the first book heavily implies that it was it was Ms. Nelson the whole time, but she changes her whole like face shape. That's really it. weird. I remember this book. This I is, remember this, this, this book. This episode's been a little sort of walk down memory lane as a as a child for me. Julia, yeah. did you ever talk about what sort of cartoons? Uh, you or or media you you thought were cool because they were like, am I supposed to be watching this? I did not. Did you have any of those? I had a bunch because I had an older brother. Oh, nice. 
I had an older brother who was about four years older than me. So it was like just enough for him to, you know, sneak me some two cool cartoons. Oh yeah. We watched um Beavis and Butthead, which was oh, real edgy. Yeah, that's that's a that's a dirt that's a I, I saw that one on TV one time and I was like, uh uh-uh, uh, this is too naughty. That's too naughty for this me. Is I'm too a good naughty boy. for me. I can't I know I'm not supposed to be watching this. I did not enjoy it, but I did enjoy the fact that I was watching it. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. I felt that way with South Park for a long time. Like, I didn't really like to watch it. Right. But all the kids at school were like, did you see South Park? They said shit in it. And I was like, (laughs) whoa. Yeah, I saw it. I was like late coming around to South Park because there was one kid in my middle school who was super into South Park and was super annoying. <laughs> and so That'll was, ruin it for you. I was just like, I, I don't think I like this show. And then I liked it for a while. And now I've gone back to not sure <laughs> yeah. about it. You know, these things, they come and go. <laughs> they come and go. Hit or miss. Uh, uh, that's what happened to me with the band Good Charlotte. There was an annoying kid who liked I, Good I, Charlotte. I and... found I found Good Charlotte sort of independently of their you know popularity. This is my first like real taste of like you know you find something that you really like, yeah, and then it gets really popular. Uh huh. And then the really annoying kid at school is like, I love Good Charlotte. Lifestyles of the rich and the famous. And you're like, oh fuck. Oh fuck. Did I, I guess I don't like it I now. Guess, I guess I was wrong. I guess I was wrong. <laughs> about what I liked. I thought I liked it, but I guess I, I it mustn't be true. I simply can't. I, I simply can't is what I, I was. I, I was in the South, so. I simply can't. I can't do it. Yeah, I think everyone's had like something like that, though. Yeah. Did you ever have something like, well, Julia, you were always big on like, I like what I like, who gives a yeah. shit, well, what anyone else thinks, which yeah. is the right attitude to have. I was very into doing whatever... I thought was fine and good. Like my rule was I'm allowed to like whatever I want as long as it's not hurting anyone. So go away. That was always my tude. That's the correct tude. That's Julia, you've just been cool your whole life, huh? <laughs> that's just been <laughs> Yeah, Julia that's, that's was cool the... <laughs> in the ways that it, adults are cool. Yeah. As a kid. Congrats. And I was just a little piece of shit. <laughs> I was trapped in the conundrum of like thinking why does it matter what I like? Everyone can go away, but also being slightly concerned that I was not fitting in. Yeah. Yeah. Which is always, you know, I feel like that's what you hit when you're in like your mid twenties. Mm-hmm. Is just that stage of like, I don't I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I want, but like please please be my friend. <laughs> yeah, but just please I, I'm gonna do what I want, but please like me for it. But still yeah. Please still think it's cool that I'm doing it. Yeah. I don't care what you think, but I kind of care. But what I, you think. I really care what you think. So it's not that I care what you think. I just want you to still like me. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do my own think... thing either way. But <laughs> please accept it. I want you to think that you like me. Yeah. I don't like this guy. He, oh, come he, on. He doesn't care what anyone thinks. But he doesn't. But maybe he should a bit. I do it's like just, his design. You you really drew someone who looks like they smell bad and I'm <laughs> he smells really he's from the most vile I, of swamps I'm proud of you for really getting that he's so happy well yeah he's, he's having so a great time he loves be, his swamp but he is so lonely. happy to be gross he's happy to be gross and needs to find someone gross to spend his life with but unfortunately he likes to wander into town I love his pristine ukulele though well yeah that's one of his like treasured possessions he loves it he wouldn't let that get dirty does he play it or does he just sort of Wave it around. He waves it around. He doesn't know what it's for. <laughs> of course. He thinks it's a shillelagh as we've. He just rattles it. As we've discussed. Jacob, this is such a fun design. Thank you. I love him. This is this is me. This is me, Druid Dwarf. If something has gone horribly wrong. Yeah. This is like I get kicked out of the party, and then I go back to my swamp. Go off on your own. And I'm like, I don't need a party. I am the party. I am the party. The party was right here all along. <laughs> Come on over. Come on over. It's the party, party time. never stops in the most vile of swamps. <laughs> it also never starts. Because <laughs> it's always going. Because it's always going. It's me. I, I am the party. I'm I'm very lonely. <laughs> Come be stinky with me in my stinky swamp. <laughs> he just has on like a rope belt. Yep. He found a rope, a dirty rope. And then yeah, I think he yeah, just has on like think... a little like tunic. 
This is good. You know, I think this is a good positive role model maybe for um, Tarb because Tarb like doesn't have many nice things and they're kind of bummed about it. Yeah. But I think they see we haven't come up with a name for this friend yet. But, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna think of one. But um, they Gub. See, His name is not Gub. <laughs> Gub's too close to Tarb, so I want it to be like a little different. But Gub is the right vibe. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you want two syllables? How many syllables? I want two syllables. Okay. Maybe Gub should be part of it. Maybe his name's like Gubba Dub. Ooh, Gubba Dub. That's three syllables. Maybe his name's Gubba Dub, but he goes by Gub for short. Okay. Gubba Dub. Dub. Call me Gubba Dub. That's the sound that the swamp makes. Yeah, that's the sound. I was named by the swamp. I said, what is my name? Who am I? And the swamp responded, Gubba Dub. Dub. (laughs) (laughs) It's kind of the noise it always makes, though, but... But it, and now I know it's calling my name. Calling my name. All the time. The old uh, yep. swamp. Uh, yep. Uh, yep. yep. <laughs> Gubba dub. Gubba dub. Gubba dub dub. Mm-hmm. Want to see my mushrooms? <laughs> they, they pop out all over my body. There's they grow on right head. on there. Yum, yum. I ate the rest. They make me see things. Sometimes they make me see things, and sometimes they make me real sick. Yep. But that's the swamp for you, Gubba a, Dub. <laughs> that's that's just that party lifestyle, that party swamp lifestyle. <laughs> Gubba so, Dub. Yeah, this is Gubba Dub. Aw. <laughs> Gubba Dub Dub. <laughs> One ugly dwarf in a tub that is a vile swamp. Wonderful. Julia, complete our party. Yeah. Complete our party of three. Let's yeah, do. we've got we've got tank, we've got uh caster. Now we need third. Let's roll a character. Sensitive elf ranger from a super religious upbringing who searches endlessly for their kidnapped for their ki- <laughs> child. Do you think they're in the, the factory orphanage? <laughs> oh no. Oh no, the child. This is so depressing. Is that how they meet Tarb? Have you seen my son? <laughs> and Tarb's just like, I've seen a lot of kids come and go. If they were kidnapped, they probably couldn't hack it. <laughs> what makes your son more important than anyone else? Damn, Tarb, you're gloomy. <laughs> yeah, it says it right there on my... <laughs> also, your nose is bleeding. <laughs> yeah, that's another one of my characteristics. Okay. Aww. So a but sensitive elf sensitive. ranger. Yeah. Please. They're very religious. Yeah. So I think they have like, they would have the outlook that Tarb would hate, which is like, they were born into like privilege and they're like, you know, the Lord will provide for all. And Tarb's like, didn't fucking provide for me. Also, like, you don't, you don't get to talk. You grew up in a rich household. Also, I'm a tiefling, so uh, my lord is uh, probably what you would consider the devil. <laughs> so there's that. So maybe eat my butt? Maybe eat my butt, but or don't. I don't care. Nothing matters. I'm Tarb. I'm pretty, I'm pretty gloomy. Okay. I think it would be a story where this sensitive elf ranger, over the course of the, the campaign, mm-hmm. ends up sort of adopting Tarb as, yeah. Yeah. Cause they're, as their own. Their child's dead. Their right. child's definitely dead. Their ti- yeah. Their child is very dead. Tarb maybe even killed him in the, the fighting they pits. Were, they were kidnapped, because elves like age super slowly, so like maybe it gets revealed that this child was kidnapped like hundreds of years ago. Yeah. yeah. And so Tarb thinks maybe they knew them, but like this child was is, is fully a, an adult. Yeah. Oh yeah, maybe you think they're dead, but then like it turns out they're the villain. They're the ones who own the the orphanage yeah. factory. <laughs> they got kidnapped by some evil organization that brainwashed them. And so this whole time you're like fighting and then you realize at the end. They have a bowl cut. Yeah, this is a child. <laughs> this is the child. Hi. I don't know where Gubba Dub comes into this this tale. Gubba Dub is wanted. And so they- On the on the search for the child, they encountered Gubba Dub. You know, even went to the swamps. Yeah. Yeah. Gubba Dub is the child. <laughs> Their child grew up to be Gubba Dub. They think that they think by seeing Gubba Dub that he's a dwarf, but, but really it's, he's it's, just a real it's stocky just the, swamp it's elf. Just, <laughs> just living in the swamp okay. really stunted their growth. Yeah, he was eating all those swamp mushrooms and swamp water. Okay, that's better than them being the villain. <laughs> okay, so that's a fun reveal. <laughs> that's so stupid. I go by Gubba Dub. I go by Gubba Dub. When no, you were my child. You're far falling. Yeah. That's a pasta. That's that's far falling. <laughs> I named you after my favorite pasta. <laughs> my sweet child, far falling. 
My wife, Fettuccine, misses you so much. In this world, elves are all named after pasta. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they worship angel hair. Oh, man, he has like a, a Uncle Tony, but it's Rigatoni. Rigatoni, sure, sure. What's this one's name, though? Oricetti. Yeah, Oricetti. Ziti? Ziti's a good name. Yeah. Who do you think, think is like the leader of the, the elves? Well, it's got to be angel hair, right? They're oh, like angel hair, deity. yeah. He's really just a super old elf. I yeah. made this elf really buff. There can only be so many elves, though, because you'll run out of pasta names. That's true. And then, like, the betrayer, the 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 elf that, like, betrayed them all and left to start their own faction. That's Orzo. Yeah. Because that's, that's a false pasta. <laughs> the dark general Orzo. <laughs> Orzo, they have, the betrayer. They have pastas. Uh, they have uh, potions that are named after sauces. Oh, sure. Yeah, they're the different different schools of magic. You can be a a, a a a red a red mage or a white mage or a green mage. Alfredo on, Mancer. Yeah, an Alfredo Mancer or a pesto. The pesto mancers are like everyone gets along with the pesto mancers. They're cool. Yeah. But there's like a, a fierce rivalry between like the cream based and tomato based. And the tomato based. <laughs> Oh, I love this. I love this pasta world. Yeah. yeah. But it's only the elves. It's only the elves. <laughs> that engage in this strange. Yeah, because well, that's the old magic. Yeah, is pasta based. Yeah. The new magic is traditional D&D. &D. <laughs> Searches endlessly for their kidnapped child. Yeah. Yeah. How do I make this dude look religious? What's um, like a them, religion that give, the- Give them some sort of holy sin. I mean, we've established they worship pasta. Oh, true. So maybe All right. like a- Maybe like a ravioli pendant or um, a, ma a macaroni. You know, just uh, wh whatever you want. Also, it's a ranger, so they probably got like- Oh, a big pasta bow? A big pasta bow. <laughs> oh. A macaroni bow. Is that a golf club? No, it's, oh, a, it's ladle. a ladle. <laughs> I Is like the ladle. Is that a golf club? <laughs> <laughs> Stupid question. <laughs> it does kind of look like what, like a like one a of them. butter? Yeah. I'm searching for my son, but also I, I am going to hit the greens gotta, later. Got to hit the links, yeah. <laughs> a pasta bow, huh? They don't really bend unless it's cooked. It's a big macaroni. Well, it's, al, it's al dente. Yeah. yeah Ooh, that's yeah, a big yeah, macaroni. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's yeah. very good, Julia. He's just so tired. Did I tell you guys about when I went to the archery range? Yeah, and you shot the bow too high? I shot the bow. I, I didn't even hit the, like, the, the wall of, like, the cardboard not cardboard, the like wooden- The bullseye? Thing, not the bullseye. I didn't get close to the bullseye, but there was like a target oh, yeah. paper that was on a giant sort of wooden block. Yeah. And I didn't even hit the wooden block. Um, so archery, not your- Archery, not for me, you're but- You're not I, a ranger. I loved the just sort of people who were clearly regulars at the archery range. There was this one old dude who had one of them, them rolly walkers. Uh -huh. And so he would sit on that and have the bow just sort of propped up on the ground. And, and just then, like blast arrows into a target. Yeah, and then his wife would sit next to him with little uh, little binoculars out. And they, were, they were so cute. That's really adorable. And he was he was nailing the targets too. I was like, this guy knows what he's doing. That's pretty sweet. I hope yeah. when I'm old, even if I have a walker, I'm still like going to the axe throwing range and just hurling axes. Just hurling axes and you got your 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 wife and and best friend there just just being like oh that was a good one honey great, great bull's idea <laughs> look at this elf just in the woods no one is around just, <laughs> maybe he's like on the like the road is here he's just standing off to the side because he doesn't want to be too up, in the way putting up the signs like, yeah, if it's not too much trouble have you I lost him uh two hundred years ago so you know just he probably looks a little different probably now. looks a little different but again elves age slowly so <laughs> then meanwhile <laughs> gubba dub is <laughs> just like. Yeah, yeah. Two hundred nice. years ago, sounds about right about when I f found myself in the swamp, the vile swamp. That vile swamp. It's like, oh, shut up, Gubba Dub. <laughs> what a crazy coincidence. <laughs> so here's my character. What's what's your character's name? Wasn't it? It was ZD, right? Yeah, it was ZD. ZD. Okay, yeah. we like ZD. Good, good, good. Okay, we so like we got ZD. ZD, Gubba Dub, and Tarb. Tarb. Yeah. A real sort of tragic party. I yeah. Think. A little bit. <laughs> I don't think they get into much like action or adventure. It's really just the- uh, But the pasta bit is, is fun. The pasta bit is fun. That, it really kind of undermines <laughs> yeah. the tale a little bit. You know, you gotta, you gotta balance it out when you're world building. You gotta have some levity in there. 
This uh, is our new party. Feel free to take them into your next campaign. Yeah, yep. for sure. Make um, them your characters. And again, thank you again to who the fuck is my D&D character dot com. If you're ever having trouble thinking up a D&D character, give that website a click. It's fun. Yeah, it's real good. And uh, if you like D&D, watch Dropout. There's there's D&D show on there. Yeah, Fantasy High, baby. Fantasy Dimension High 20. and now Escape from Blood Keep. Yep. It rules. Go it's, to it. It's super good. Check it out. There's also Drawfee stuff on there. Drawfee a week early. Cartoon Hell. We love you. We love you. We're sorry. 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 Hey, thanks for watching that episode of Drawfee. If you like Drawfee and the stuff we make, the best way to support us is by signing up for Dropout. For around the cost of a jug of mouthwash a month, you get access to Drawfee episodes a week early, as well as a exclusive Dropout Discord where you can chat with me. And you get access to the Dropout exclusive shows like Cartoon Hell, I Made That Show, Um Actually, which I was on, and Rank Room, which I was also on. It's a good time. Start your free trial. Go to dropout.tv. Please. Please.